Here. 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 Thank you. Uh, item number three is public comment. Uh, anyone in the public uh, is allowed to speak for up to three minutes on any item either on the agenda or an item that is not on the agenda, if you wish. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, this, this particular public comment is only for items that are on the agenda. Uh, you will have the opportunity if you're, I see several members here that are to speak uh, uh, on for three minutes during the uh, your agenda item so you don't need to speak now unless you wish to but you you may anyone want to speak thank you item number four approval of the agenda motion. move to approve second I got a motion and a second to approve the agenda as written any discussion all in favor aye, aye. any opposed passes unanimously item number five approval of the minutes motion to approve as submitted second I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, July 19th uh, Planning Commission meeting any discussion all in favor aye. Aye. aye any opposed passes unanimously announcements and committee reports we have no attorney bolts thank you uh, item number seven uh, under informational items is a presentation by the regional planning uh, transportation plan uh, by Amy Cummins with the Regional Transportation Commission. I think Lee Gibson is going to introduce her. Lee Gibson is the executive director of the RTC. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to go through our regional transportation plan effort. I want to remind everyone, uh, you know, most of most folks think of RTC as either the bus operator or the street and highway constructor, but we're actually a planning organization as well. We're the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Reno Sparks Urbanized Area and for Washoe County. That's a very important function because our main job as the MPO is to bring back our tax dollars that we uh, pay into the Highway Trust Fund and into the general revenue accounts back for transportation investments. If any of you had the opportunity uh, to go out to the 580 grand opening today, that's an excellent example of a major roadway where we brought back substantial uh, monies from the Highway Trust Fund to help build a regional facility that I think in the long term hopefully will uh, bring us some economic uh, development opportunities. Tonight's presentation by Amy is going to bring you up to speed uh, on that, on that uh, planning process. Uh, we'll probably be back with to you later in the fall with some more concrete recommendations. An emphasis tonight we do have is on public transportation. We do, we've had a lot of feedback as you'll see tonight on public transportation needs and we're going to be talking with you with the City of Sparks about how those uh, uh, needs can be met. Indeed, I, I, I may be a little premature, but indeed I think we're going to have a major transit summit later in the fall, maybe early winter, to talk about how the region can address some of these um, uh, opportunities and address some of the shortfalls. But with that, let me turn it over to Amy and uh, her able assistant in the back, to Ella, to uh, go through this presentation, and uh, then we'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much. I'm Amy Cummings, Director of Planning at RTC, and I'm very happy to be able to talk to you about our Regional Transportation Plan. This is a document that we update every four years, and it identifies the long-range 20-year vision and infrastructure investments that we anticipate to make in our region. And one of the things we're trying to emphasize in this particular cycle is linking land use and transportation planning initiatives. And I want to thank Armando and many of the other um, Sparks planning staff who have been through many of RTP meeting throughout this process, and, and we really appreciate their support. Um, in terms of the process, we started out by uh, having an outreach effort to identify the goals and guiding principles for the plan. The next phase that we're wrapping up right now is going out to the community and asking people for their ideas on projects that they would like us to look at. And we have about another month before we complete our new travel demand model, which is going to include the latest uh, 2035 consensus forecast that the TMRPA has developed with the county and the jurisdictions. And uh, then we'll start the analysis, the technical analysis of all the projects that have been suggested. So we hope to uh, around the November time frame have a draft plan and we'll certainly be back in touch with more of those those details. This highlights the guiding principles that were identified through our public process and that's to emphasize safe and healthy communities, economic development, sustainability and increased travel choices. 
We're also working closely with the Health District and the Safe Routes to School program to look at ways we can make our regional, because we do have a lot of schools on regional roads in particular. We have some here on Prater Way, uh, just down the street. So we're working with them to identify projects to make it easier for kids to walk and bike to school. Complete streets is another important component of, of what we do. And safety, again, is the cornerstone here. We found that in places where we've done um, complete streets improvements, uh, here at Victorian Avenue is one example, Mayberry and Arlington are, are some other examples you may be familiar with. We've reduced crashes by 30 to 40 percent in areas where those, those improvements have been made. And as we've been out talking to the community, the primary thing we've been hearing is not the need for new roads, but the need for enhanced access and transit connectivity, especially in the outlying suburban neighborhoods where people are they're telling us that they feel very isolated and don't have the level of transportation options that they would like. So we're looking at some different scenarios for um, circulator services in some of those uh, outlying neighborhoods. And we've gotten some specific requests for new routes, uh, Pyramid Way along the McCarran Loop and some others. Uh, so we'll be looking at developing cost estimates and uh, ridership forecasts for those types of new services and we'll be taking that back to the public uh, in the next couple of months for review. We've also asked folks what their vision would be for the rapid, our bus rapid transit service, which has been very successful on Virginia Street. And the main thing we've been hearing from folks is to extend that uh, up to UNR and uh, on Virginia Street and also down to TMCC at the southern end of the Virginia Street corridor, but also uh, east from 4th Street Station to the Legend Shopping Center. So. Amy. Amy, real quick, it says expansion the UNR underway. What? That's something that we have funding to do in the next year, and we're developing, or we're just starting a study to identify where those bus stop locations would be, uh, but to go from 4th Street Station up to UNR. Oh, okay. And that's something we hope to have uh, op operating within the next year. We already care. We already carry a substantial number of folks from 4th Street Station up to UNR. This is just going to one give them a, a faster and more economical service, faster for the customer, more economical for us, and then the station will give us a better place to sort of drop those people off. Hopefully they'll be, it'll be centrally located uh, relative to the campus and we'll help get the students and the faculty to where they want to go in a more efficient, effective manner. By us being able to cycle those buses faster, that puts money back into our bank account and that's what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, okay, thank you. And I mentioned our alternatives development process. We've been uh, going and talking to community groups. We've had a, a big public outreach effort that was at the Sparks Heritage Museum a couple months ago. And we also have a smartphone app where we're inviting people to go and, and send us their suggestions. Just search for Washoe RTP on your smartphone and also on the website at yourwashoerTP.com. And again, I wanted to emphasize our partnership with TMRPA. They have updated the population employment forecast so we have the best available data in our travel demand model um, that incorporates all of the jurisdictions uh, plan land use and zoning so uh, do you have any questions for us thank you very much um, let's get through the population we're seeing somewhat of a little bit of a slowdown but long term could you kind of go through that? Absolutely. When you compare the, the forecast uh, going forward now, it's only about 30,000 people less uh, than the, the forecast that was done four years ago. So there could be a slight fall off in the travel demand mm -hmm. model um, congestion levels, but the preliminary data we're getting back uh, by 2035, there's still going to be substantial traffic congestions on our, you know, on McCarran. Um, Pyramid, all of those major projects that are in the works now for Southeast Connector and the Pyramid 395 Connector are still very much going to be needed. Right. Okay. Even with the, the lower Even population. With it. And you know, I, I looked through the, the whole Todd and the concept and the rapid, and that's great, and we need that. But I see always in the Todd there's little pushes of showing going up, like you say, going up Sparks Boulevard, Vista. Uh, pyramid um, from a spark standpoint we really do need some mass transit in those areas I feel yeah. at, at, that echoes a lot of what we've been hearing from the community right. is that they want more transit connectivity and in particular uh, pyramid the pyramid quarter and mr. mr. chairman if I may add we're hearing that from our elected leadership we're hearing that from uh, county representatives who represent the North <coughs> Valleys uh, county representatives who represent um, uh, Sparks, 
uh, and we're, we're clearly seeing that as we go forward in this plan, the question and issue of providing enhanced public transportation to Sparks is going to be something this plan is going to have to address. Any other questions? Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, if I could ask another, um, maybe some of the status and some of the larger projects. Could you ask? Uh, sh sure, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, we're moving forward with all of our major projects. The Southeast Connector, that actually is now under final design, and we're working with the Corps of Engineers. We're actually may make some modifications to how the permit is structured and be able to advance construction uh, sooner as opposed to later. We have an RFP out right now. Final design for the Pyramid McCarran intersection will be underway shortly. That means we are going to be preparing construction documents and buying right away. We're already in the process today of doing hardship right away acquisitions. I believe we have six homeowners uh, we're, we're talking with now and working the paperwork through. We actually did something, and I want to uh, take a moment and compliment sure. the Nevada Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration. Nothing ever done north or south in this state has been the permission or the cooperation of, of the RTC, NDOT, and FHWA to come forward and get an advanced uh, right-of-way acquisition program before final design is completed. It's never been done in this state. We're doing it for Pyramid McCarran. And that means we're going to be able to help move some of those folks who they could have a job opportunity in another state or another part of the state or, or just they're ready to move, but for whatever reason they can't get out. We're going to get them out of there. We're going to make them whole. So we're very happy that that's moving forward. Uh, we have a draft environmental impact statement in for the 395 connector. That's the road that follows disk drive over from Pyramid Highway to the, three, to, uh, the 395 freeway. Again, a great reliever for the McCarran corridor great new opportunity, a great new link for Sparks. We're going to get that uh, hopefully uh, in right-of-way acquisition in 2014-2015. Uh, so Southeast Connector, Pyramid McCarran, 395 Connector. 395 Widening is also another one that we'll be working on. And uh, interestingly enough, with the new Apple uh, facility that we'll be going in, we're looking at some bicycle and pedestrian improvements uh, along the I-80 corridor to help maybe uh, connect that, give those folks an alternative to using the automobile to get to work. So those are major projects that are in our tip. They're moving forward. They will be carried forward into this regional transportation plan. And the future population projections, you know, showing full, full need for those facilities as they were defined earlier uh, uh, in the planning process. So That's great because both of those projects of Pyramid and both the connector are so important to Sparks. To our city. Lee, when you talked about the right-of-way acquisitions on Pyramid and McCarran there, are we talking the west and the east side? Or? If I get my directions correct, east. we're talking about the northeast quadrant and the southeast quadrant where the residential okay. homes are. Because the, 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 we can bring back mm -hmm. a status report on that if you would like. But we're, the design is mostly going to the east. So uh, uh, the businesses, the church are all being left tall. We don't, wanna, we don't want to... Uh, uh, interrupt the access to the church. We certainly don't want to do anything to jeopardize the jobs in the commercial centers in the southwest quadrant. So uh, we're going to move it to the east. And that's going to get better. It also gives some better design uh, uh, concepts for us to get the uh, uh, left turns in. Right. So, okay. Any other questions? Amy, did you have Mr. Chairman, I would like to, to a special shout out to uh, Vice Chairman Sperber. He serves on our Regional Road Impact Fee Advisory Committee. Uh, when Amy talked about uh, linking transportation and land use together, uh, that that group and the administration, in cooperation with your your planners and your Public Works Department, are are really helping set the stage for linking transportation and land use. I think you're going to be hearing more about the impact fee program and how we perhaps can expand it and improve it and make it uh, something that will be a tool to help us uh, going forward uh, realize a, a uh, enhanced land use pattern and transportation connections that will support economic development. So thanks, Art. We Thank appreciate you. all your hard Thank you. Uh, I see a lot of this about bi bicycles and, and turning bike lanes different things. A lot of cities have formal uh, bike share programs. Are we l looking into anything like that? Yes, I am very excited to say uh, in our last uh, modification to our uh, transportation improvement program, we're going to have a pilot project for bike share in Sparks. So we'll have two locations to start with, and John Erickson is, has taken the lead on this. Um, there would be one set of bike racks at the Sparks Marina and one at Centennial Plaza. So it's something we hope will be useful for commuters to, you know, really affect that mode share of giving people an option of riding a bike instead of driving. And it's something that can be expanded 
uh, certainly it's very scalable and you we're starting with just two locations but hope that that's a program that would be successful and, and grow thank you I, I just have one uh, kind of final qu maybe final question um, one of the things we're going to be discussing a little later on tonight is p the possibility of changes in the TOD uh, areas and sparks and I know Reno is looking at s some changes as well uh, are you uh, involved in that and do you have uh, thoughts on those kinds of things uh, either for sparks or Reno absolutely and we have been participating with regional planning and we're happy to talk to you and come back and you know deal more specifically with transit operational issues if, if you have an interest in that um, TOD is very important to have supportive land uses for transit service. I know our challenge here is we don't have the level of transit that we would like to have mm -hmm. in the TOD corridor. Um, but if you have supportive land use, it doesn't just help transit ridership, it helps it make it a more walkable, vibrant community um, just from, from the ground level. So that would certainly help transit in the future and we hope to, to expand that service in particular on the Prater Corridor. Um, as we identified in our, our fourth Prater Corridor study, the initial leg might be a 4th Street station to Centennial Plaza, rapid route, um, and then as you saw in the vision plan, hopefully an extension out to Legends at some point in the future. One of the, you uh, gave a presentation to the Regional Planning Commission a few weeks ago and you had some, some additional uh, uh, data that you, you presented and one of them was a study that you were doing on ridership and some, some of the uh, issues that of where, where your riders were coming from and uh, particularly in some of the areas we're talking about on the on the TOD corridor have you gotten anywhere on that well I know region wide about 65 percent of our total boardings happen in the regional centers in the TODs and we do have the split I can't remember specifically what it was in Sparks but we do have those numbers and can bring that back to you uh, at a future meeting or get it yeah I think I asked that night on the regional planning because I was concerned about uh, that's interesting information but it's it would be more interesting if we knew the right that ridership and where it's coming from in the various TOD uh, sections in yes. Sparks or in Reno for that matter yes uh, and so I'm hopeful that that's something you'll be providing later on to the regional I have a table that perhaps I could email to you and you could distribute okay. thank you any other questions if not thanks very much for the presentation okay thank you very much I guess we're not going to hear from your lovely little assistant. <laughs> she was quiet, so that yeah. was perfect for her. See you, Thank you. All right, we move on to the uh, public hearing items tonight, starting with item number 8, PCN 12021, Horizon Christian Church. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman and Planning Commission. I'm Karen Melby, Senior Planner. I'm waiting for the dog you can. Okay. <laughs> Before you today is a special use permit to allow Horizon Christian Church to be located on these two parcels. They're both one acre parcels. This is Prater and this would be Vista. Um, they are proposing to remodel the existing um, credit union building into offices and a temporary sanctuary, which would seat about 130 people. Um, this property was uh, issued a special use permit in 1994 and in 1995 the credit union building was built. They have occupied that building until, I don't know, I couldn't quite find that in our records, but it's been occupied for a while. It's a 4,600 square foot building that they want to remodel into the church. They anticipate building a, a sanctuary on the vacant parcel um, in the near future. So this special use permit is including both parcels and the future um, sanctuary. Right in the interim right now, they, um, with 130 seats, they require 43 parking spaces. 
and the office would require 10 parking spaces for a, ten, a total of 53 parking spaces. The property has 31 parking spaces on it right now, so they have actually presented with, to me tonight documents on the three parcels to the west here. They are anticipating to park on that southern parcel, and I received the letters tonight authorizing them to have that interim parking until they get their sanctuary built. Um, the other issue that staff had with this is the vacant parcel. Um, we were concerned that they'd be, people would be driving across that parcel or um, parking on that. So we've added some conditions to address that until they build and pave that lot and put the improvements on it. Staff's recommending approval with 10, can, yeah, I'm sorry, 10 conditions. I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Any uh, questions for Karen? Mr. Chair, I have one. Um, Karen, I didn't ask at Tuesday's meeting, but is that going to re remain a right in, right out, or is there going to be access to go left out of that? Are they going to do a cut through the median, or is it going to stay a right in, right out? It would be, um, in talking to uh, John Erickson, the traffic engineer, what we are going to look at that when we have the sanctuary coming in, the new sanctuary building, but it looks like it will remain. We may move the median cut to the west where, from where it is now, but it would still be only a left in from the going westbound, but it would not be a left out. It would still be in and a right in, right out from eastbound on Prater. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions? Any other questions? If not, is the applicant here? <laughs> Would you like to come up and <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, Mr. Chairman and, and fellow um, commissioners, it, we're excited. I, uh, we have uh, a number of our leadership team that's here tonight. And we've been meeting in the Reed High School, watching this church grow over the last few years. We're excited that this will be our first purchase of a building that we're going to use uh, not only now but in the future. We're excited about building the new sanctuary next door, and that, that will happen fairly soon. And so. Thank you for your time and consideration uh, of this, but uh, this is a big day for uh, Horizon Christian Church. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions. So, so again, you, you got some, some agreements to be able to utilize some of that parking, so yes. that all worked out very well. And there, there's, I mean, the requirement was to have uh, the 53. We have 31 on our side. We have room to add on that, plus we have 50 now next door, so we have more than enough to meet, meet the needs. Great, and again, your hours will be somewhat different if... For the most part, it's Sunday morning, right. and then we have so our offices during the week. There might be exactly. four or five, and then some evening meetings once in a while, so... It'll actually work out really well for, with, with our neighbors next door. Great. Okay. Any other questions? Um, did, I, did I read somewhere about adult daycare? I missed the meeting on Tuesday. I'm sorry. Adult daycare. Broke my foot. Yeah. I thought I read somewhere. You want to add that? I, I, I haven't added that one. <laughs> okay. I must have been. Don't know anything about that one. But maybe it's for me. I don't know. Adult daycare. That's the, the parking that they're doing. Oh, the adult okay. daycare I'm sorry, I can't. I facilities parking I on Sunday mornings. Okay. Yeah. And it's anticipated that that parking lot would only be used on Sundays for their church services. It wouldn't right. be. They've got an adequate number of parking spaces on the site to, for any night meetings or mm -hmm. um, functions during the day. Great. Thank you. Maybe it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't All right. This is a... <laughs> This is, uh, thank you. This is a public hearing item. Uh, anyone in the public would like to come forward and uh, speak for up to three minutes uh, on this issue? Well, you all look like you're positive about it, but don't want to speak, which is. Do you want to? I'm happy to stop Pastor of Christian Church. We just want to thank you for all your work for our community. Thank you for all the time you put in. You know, it just goes a lot of things just to people and this and that and everything else. We're just glad we work with you. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, if there is no one else, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the Planning Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. That'd I, be fine. I move to approve the special use permit associated with PCN 12021, adopting findings S1 through S6, and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report, subject to conditions of approval 1 through 10 
as listed in the staff report. Second. I have a motion and a second uh, to approve uh, PCN 12021. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck with Good it luck. all. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. The uh, next item on the agenda is item number nine, PCN 12023 CrossFit Sparks Elite. Good evening, Planning Commission members and Council. For the record, I'm Don Morehouse with the Community Services Department. The case before you is that of PCN 12023. It's a special use permit to allow for a small group fitness recreational facility. The parcel is located at 625 Spice Island Drive, Suite B, and resides within the Industrial Zoning District. The 3.2 acre parcel located at 625 Spice Island Drive includes four warehouse buildings currently housing industrial uses. The applicant is proposing to use Suite B, a 1,900 square foot section of a 12,000 square foot warehouse building on the south side of the parcel as CrossFit Sparks Elite, a small group fitness recreational facility. And put up a, an overhead here and point you in the right direction. basically this portion of this southern building on the parcel. So there are 10 parking spaces required for 1,900 square feet of uh, this particular use, and these spaces are available on the parcel. And staff would also like to note that uh, no members of uh, this CrossFit uh, facility will be under the age of 18. That concludes my presentation, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. Any questions for Don? I have one, Don. Did you go out there Tuesday? Uh, this past Tuesday? Yeah, after our meeting. Um, I did not. Okay. Yeah, I went out the previous week. And they were open? Yes, the previous week, unfortunately, they were open. Yeah, they, were, they, seemed, to, they seemed to be operating. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Don? Um, is the applicant here? Yes, sir. Want to come right on up? Just uh, give us your name and. Uh, Scott Peterson. Okay. Yes. Tell us what you'd like to tell us. Well, uh, just uh, basically the way this all started, I've been doing, uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of CrossFit or not, but it's a particular style of just small functional fitness, uh, almost like personal training classes, small groups, five, six, eight. Uh, and I've been, been doing it for years and it's just a passion of mine. So the way this all started was a group of friends who we all worked out together. Uh, we just basically wanted a place to go work out on our own. That's what we did. Uh, so we started it, we went, we rented this warehouse basically, we all went together, we bought our own equipment, just did this all on our own just to have our own place to work out due to the popularity and word getting around, friends friends hearing about it, we decided that we would like to turn it into a business, and so that's how it all began. So that's why we're asking for the special use permit to try to turn it into a, a full-fledged business where we're at there. Scott, do you have any uh, issues with any of the conditions that are? No. Okay. Um, I did go out there Tuesday, and, uh, and there seems to be, I went out there Tuesday at approximately about 1.30 and then again at about 5.30 to look at the mm -hmm. uh, property and both times it seemed like you guys were yeah, I mean, uh, running a business know, at that we're, time. Like I said, we've word of mouth has gotten out. We've got friends there and there's there's probably about 20 of us, 25 of us that are together right now. And, and so, you know, technically we're, I mean, we're doing workouts in there, in the facility. Are you charging uh, either fees or? We're all just helping pay the rent right now. I guess the question that you know concerns some of so us I is mean, that yeah, the, is everybody is contributing to the gym. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you don't have your special use permit yet, you also don't have your business license yet, 
right. and, and right. you're open and operating. No, I understand that. I, I, I know we're walking the fine line right now, so. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I may. Yeah. Um, as the applicant, we need, I need to remind you that um, you can't not you cannot be operating in that location at all okay. until um, the uh, not only the, uh, after the uh, planning commission has taken action, but all of the conditions of the special use permit have been satisfied okay. and the special use permit actually issued. Okay. So, any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is also a public hearing item. Anyone in the public would like to come forward and speak for three minutes on this topic? So, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission. Any other questions or discussion here or questions for Don? I have yeah. a question, yes. Mr. Chair. So if, the, if this is approved tonight, is it effective right away? Uh, no, uh, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Please, Moser. So. Commissioner Peterson, the answer to your question is, is it is not effective until all of the conditions of the special use permit have been satisfied. For example, uh, uh, condition number four requires that a um, building code study be completed, and then uh, the you know the the requirement or the the, the recommendations uh, of the building code study have to be uh, implemented, uh, and only at that time, after all the conditions are satisfied would the city actually issue the special use permit? Okay. There's, there's an actual permit, mm -hmm. uh, but it can only be issued by the city after all the conditions have been satisfied. And only after that permit has been, in fact, issued can the business legally operate in that location. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Peterson, you understand that? Oh, yeah. and by the way, we're not related. No. We kind of look alike, <laughs> but we're not related. Now, uh, is, is, it possible, is it possible to get a special use permit continued upon you, you better come back up, no. maybe. Special use permit contingent upon that one is that the only requirement left? As far as I know, I, I know that this is the third third meeting in this stage that we have fulfilled the requirements. Is that the only missing requirement up to? I, up to I, I don't know whether it's the only missing requirement. We'd have to confer with okay. the other the other divisions of the, of the city that are uh, okay. involved in the, the approval process. Okay, so and Mr. Peterson, I, yeah. I guess I would just like to say from the planning commission, uh, other folks may speak if they want, but. Uh, you're having a few people there helping to pay the no, overhead and working yeah. out together probably is not causing a crisis in our life in, in the city of Sparks. But for a business to open I understand. without the proper yeah. approvals might cause a problem. And so if we let you, we have to let anyone I, else who I, wants I, to I open can put before they yeah, go through the process. Yeah. Not a problem. So, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I know this is the third meeting in the stage of this that, that we've that we've had up till now in the special use permit process. So, from here, then, uh, I, I know I've, I've known about the, the code analysis or whatever it is that this engineer needs to, to sign off on, and we're in the process of getting that done. Where does that leave us now, then, in the next stage? I mean, uh, where, Chairman Bowles, man. Yes. Uh, to, re to reiterate my answer, or uh, repeat my answer, essentially, uh, it's after the building code analysis has been done, uh, the condition, the, 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 if it requires, for example, or recommends, you know, certain uh, improvements or modifications to the building be done, mm -hmm. those, in fact, those buildings, are, those improvements or modifications, in fact, have to be done before, you know, the, the appropriate okay. uh, division of the city will sign off. In that case, it would be the building official. Okay. No, I understand so, that. But so I the, so. It, 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 uh, to repeat, you can't operate the business legally okay, until the permit has been issued, and the permit can't be issued until all the conditions have been okay, satisfied. That's not a problem. But what I, what I guess my question, again, is so, for example, if I get a code analysis finished by whatever midweek next week, I turn that in, I well, mean, do I have to wait for another? Am, is, am I cycled through for the next planning meeting or is there, there wouldn't be another planning meeting if the, if the special use permit is is, uh, is essentially approved by the planning commission then any of the conditions have to be satisfied before before the permit can be issued okay so that'll be an approval 
I mean, pending it, it approval? It would be a, an tonight, approval. It's tomorrow. a conditional approval. Okay. And okay. then all I have to do is, is meet that condition. Meet the meet conditions. condition. Yes. Okay. Permit will issue administratively. There will be no more public meetings unless there's an appeal. Okay. Under the under the city's appeal code. Okay. So once once that uh, code analysis is finished, or then I just I just return it here to the. You would return it to you'd, you'd return it to the building division. Okay. Yeah. And I know well, if there's also a fire fire department uh, comply yeah. with all the requirements of the fire department prior to getting a business license. So okay. I know the fire department. None, none of those are hoops okay. that that will involve the planning commission, but they are things that need to be done before you're doing business. Okay. The, I know the fire department has been out and inspected. And that's as far as I knew. That was finished. Do you, do you not have that? that? Maybe okay. that's one of the conditions. Okay. We're not. Okay. I'm not suggesting it isn't done. Okay. I'm just suggesting it's one of the things that needs to be done. As Assistant City Attorney uh, uh, Mr. Thorling has said, um, the the actual sign off by all of of all the conditions <coughs> is an administrative function. Uh, so it would be the fire department. It would be uh, the building division. It would be planning, etc. Okay. And those sign offs are administrative, and only after all of those sign-offs that have, have occurred, can the permit be issued? And, no, I understand. and at that point, can okay. you legally operate? And, in, and then in any event, assuming a best case scenario for you, let's say you get everything done tomorrow, and you have a really good construction crew, and you are done by Sunday, and you're in here Monday, and you're ready for the administrative issuance of the permit, you're still out 21 days from tonight, if they approve it, because that's the appeal period, and it won't okay. issue within the appeal period. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. All right. We are back at the planning commission level. Any more questions for uh, staff or Don? Mr. Chair? Yes. If you're ready for a motion. I am. I move to approve the special use permit associated with PCN 12023, adopting findings S1 through S6 mm -hmm. and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report, subject to the conditions of approval. One through six, as listed in the staff report. Do I hear a second? Let's bring it back to the level for discussion. Do we need a second for discussion? We need a, since we have since we have not had a second to the motion, we're still in planning commission general discussions. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve uh, PCN uh, 12023 uh, discussion. Mr. Chairman, um, I appreciate the fact that Mr. Peterson wants to open up his business here in, in the city of Sparks. Um, I just want to make sure that, that he understands that we don't want him to jeopardize that process by continuing to operate. Um, I'll be voting in favor of this, but I want to make sure that he doesn't do anything until he gets his permit. Any other discussion? And, you know, I, I agree exactly what, what Mitch just said. I, and I know uh, Don was out there, I believe, last week and said you were operating without a business license. You need to shut it down. And we asked if we go out there after a study session Tuesday, but uh, Commissioner Benwin went out there and you were open. I mean, there's right against the city right there so I mean if we approve this special use permit and if the city official goes out there and I'm sure somewhere down the line one of the city officials will not sign off on that and you won't get a business license so I mean it's, it's a fair warning thank you any other discussion if not all in favor aye, aye. any opposed uh, we have uh, five votes in favor, one a nay, and the motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number 10, PCN 12025, Nevada Generation Systems American Power Solutions.
Good evening, yes. Chairman Bowles and the Planning Commission. Karen Melby, Senior we're Planner. We're now focused on you. Yeah. Right Sorry. We were seeing how quickly Doug was going to catch up with us. <laughs> this is a special use permit to allow Nevada Generator to, to operate a gen, engine generator distribution facility located at 1939 Fraser, which is this property right here on the south side of Fraser. Um, the primary use would be warehousing of the generator sets and also parts, including, and then also their administrative, you know, clerical business operations. Uh, this property is uh, with the transition overlay, and in, in zoned industrial with the transition overlay, which requires a special use for, for any new uses. Griffith um, Electric had been located on this property since 1986. However, in December of 2009, they vacated the property, so that exceeds the two years. And so Nevada Generator, when they wanted to occupy this property, had come in for a special use permit. Um, they anticipate there will be a limited amount of service work done on site. Most of it is at the customer's site for, on the, their generators. Um, and there will be some covered stor storage on the property. One of the, um, I don't know if you'd say issues, but one of the concerns staff had was there are, there is a home that is occupied just east of this property, and then there's two homes across the alley to the south of this property. So the staff added some conditions for operations that they um, cannot operate um, their generators in the evenings, late out into the evenings and that they must be operated, all operations must occur inside the buildings, not to disturb the existing residents in the area. We did receive a, a letter from one of the neighboring property owners, and he is here tonight, so I'll let him talk about that letter. I think I forwarded the photographs and emails to everyone, but Jim Galloway is here tonight, so I'll let him address that. Um, staff is recommending approval with nine conditions. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions by the Planning Commission for Karen? Do we have an applicant? I was going to say. Yes, he's here also. Yeah, I would rather ask, yeah. ask a question. So. Is the applicant available? Would you like to come forward and give us a quick presentation, please? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dave Bardelli. I'm president of Nevada Generator. And uh, we've been in business in business uh, since uh, Nevada Generator has been in business since the uh, mid 1970s in Spark, formerly located at 1520 Glendale Avenue. Uh, we've somewhat outgrown that facility. I've owned the business for the past since 2001. We've outgrown the facility at 1520, and I've had a local realtor keeping his eye out for a possible, you know, better location for us and. Oh, in January, he came to me and he said, Dave, I think I might have found something for you. I said, great, let's go look at it. And uh, actually, the property it was ideal for our, for our use. So I went ahead and uh, leased the property. In uh, Well, my lease would have taken effect in April. So in early March, I uh, we were preparing, it's ready to move, so we notified the City of Sparks uh, that we would be considering moving from 1520 uh, Glendale to uh, 1939 Fraser, and we anticipated the move to be sometime around the 1st of April. Uh, I, we were told, I sent them a, told to send them a fax uh, confirming that, confirming our conversation, which I did. And uh, we began moving our operation to the Fraser facility oh, in mid-March, and by mid-April we were pretty much uh, set, set to go there. Uh, during this transition, a uh, fire department, building department, uh, whoever normally comes and inspects us came and inspected us and that. And then I guess, Karen, it was in May that I was advised about the special use permit. In May, uh, we got a notification that, oh, gosh, you need a special use permit here. <laughs> okay, well, 
you know, what are we doing? And, and I spoke to, to Ms. Melby, and you know, they, she was quite helpful and uh, kind of directed me in the right direction. And we, we got, had a little problem getting hold of Mr. Griffith, the owner of the property. So uh, I almost missed this date to get this application, but fortunately, you know, with, with some help and understanding, it, it, it went through. So anyhow, that's where we are. We're, we're, we've been operating there uh, since full time since, uh, since May. And I've just been trying to, this, this special use permit thing came as kind of a surprise to me. And, you know, perhaps I or my realtor should have been a little, done a little due diligence in the thing, but it's kind of the last thing on our mind that, gosh, we need a special use permit in an industrial area. So there we are. Questions? Yeah, I do. What is the largest generator that, that you store there? That we would have at that facility. We can't handle anything at that facility, say over 200 kilowatts, which would be a generator uh, with a base of approximately 8 feet by yeah. 4 feet. And uh, we're not equipped to handle anything there larger than that. And. Uh, the generators we, we work on at the facility are usually small uh, home standby, uh, uh, industrial, commercial, portable standbys, or we do have some of our smaller residential generator sets delivered to our location, and from there we'll truck it to the to the uh, customer. Who is the customer? Individual uh, or individual uh, municipalities, uh, industrial project, anything. Um, go ahead. Do you work on those there in the yard on some of these? Uh, there are some discussions here, whether you did or didn't, or we have a shop area. We have a right rather shop and, a, and a shop so. area. However, we do sometimes work on generators outside. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, uh, if, if somebody brings a motor home in, uh, it's, right. it's, they it's, would it's, it's, it's rather difficult to. To get them inside. To, to so bring occasionally in. you have to have Occasionally, we, yes, we do work outside. Do you, do you, um, in in the, there is, I'm thinking, the noise. Um, 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 we're looking at this condition. What what hours do you actually work? Uh, 7 a.m. to the shop is usually closed at 4 p.m. Okay. So, you know, right now we've got a condition that's talking until 10 p.m., and I was wondering if you needed that full 10 p.m. Really. I, I, and whether I, we could maybe, you know, with a house near there, working outside yeah. after five or something, you know. No, I mean we certainly reasonable. we certainly want to be a good neighbor. As a, as a matter of fact, the other day, uh, the Marine we do business with the Marine Corps. They brought a bunch mm -hmm. of generators in, and they were load testing them out in the yard, and they were and you actually close that. to the fence over there. Right. And I said, "Oh, geez, I hope nobody's home." And <laughs> Right. It was in the early afternoon. I didn't see a car. But I actually I spoke to the guys and said, hey, you know, at the very least, if you have to run these things, do it on the other side of the yard where there's, where there's, a, like where there's a, vacant, a vacant lot. It, you know, it's just right. being a good neighbor. So it's nothing after a five or something that you need those hours? Unless there's a, you know, a big emergency, emergency or something that, you know, okay. something has to be done uh, in the right. middle of the night. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Um, I, I think I hear you saying, even though it's not often, that that you don't um, meet the conditions of approval for item 8. The applicant shall conduct no work on generators or any operations outside of the existing building. If it, these are what are put in these conditions okay. right now at this point, we're right. asking. No, if, if you know. we, we can work in the existing building, except, as I said, for if a motor home, uh, Right. Sometimes it, it actually be, might be more convenient to work on a generator in the yard, but it, it's not essential. Okay. Well, I think as it stands right now, unless you wish to um, appeal to the staff on Condition 8, you are, you, we are approving it with the idea that there will, is no See, work done, what... done outside. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
see and i wouldn't be against occasionally having some you know allowing to do certain work on the thing but that's not the way the condition is written right now you can see where we're yeah you know i see that it would be it would be easier for us if naturally if that condition were were modified somewhat to to allow some limited work outside but uh and we can talk to karen and no, and the uh, the obviously uh, with, with uh, maybe a little less um, um, uh, more from lack of knowledge about the situation than intent. But you have the same situation that our previous applicant did, in that you mm -hmm. are open for business without a special use permit at the moment. Right. And so, Mr. Thornley, do you have any? Well, I. Look there. I'm in, a, I'm in a bit of a spot on this one, uh, so no, I have nothing to add. You've you've heard my spiel. Can I so. make one comment? Yeah. Yes. Unlike the previous case with Scott Peterson, there, with his operation, there is potential of life safety issues. Um, if you look at the conditions that are in the staff report, none of them are conditions that would actually require for him to do anything. These are operating conditions, and so that's the di one of the difference in his favor in the fact that I mean, it's, not, it's not correct that he's being on operating right now, but he is not in a life safety issue potentially that Scott Peterson is Neither. in. This, I mean, all of his conditions are regulations on how he runs his operation and not anything that he has to do improvements to the site. So in, in his defense, <laughs> that's one thing, but I mean, he should not be operating right now until he does have a special use permit. Karen, also on condition number eight, how can we modify or amend that to read that if a, um, you know, trailer does come in or a, a bus or something that he needs to work on that, you know, obviously he can't bring it in the building, an RV. I mean, he'd have to work on it outside. I mean, I guess we could add something to the, on the condition except for the, I mean, would it be vehicles? A vehicle or, you know, something perhaps on a trailer that, that, that couldn't be moved brought, into your building, yeah. brought, brought in, physically brought into the, into the building or the, where, or, or the warehouse. And, you know, even, even with that condition, we, we could, you know, as I said, we want to be a good neighbor to people. Right. And if we need to work on something outside, we could always work on it as far away from any, there's a vacant lot on the other side of the building. So right. it, it's... But that may not be vacant forever. Yeah. They will definitely not be but, residential ever, though. Right. So any so, time that lot would be built, it would be right. an industrial. The only thing I, yeah. you know, I could foresee if, if something is physically too large to be brought into the shop that, that... The hard part for code enforcement on something like that is we get into a gray area of how okay. do we define what's too large. So that creates a problem for code enforcement. And, and frequency and um, how often is this ha situation happening. So, I mean, that's where it becomes a problem for code enforcement. Steve. Could I uh, propose a, uh, a revised sure. condition that's just it's actually quite a bit more level? On and it just clears up that area in terms of the gray, and we just simply limit any outdoor operations to the, between, say, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., and that way you're not you're not, uh, you know, you're not doing any of those repairs outside of those normal business hours. Anything other than normal, that, 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 Seven a.m. to five p.m. More than, more, more than uh, we need. But yes, thank you. And that's in addition to uh, condition eight. Replacing yes. condition eight. Replacing condition eight. Just eliminating the eight. <coughs> no, well. what he's suggesting is that any outdoor. Any work conducted outside would be con be conducted between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Oh, okay, and at least DC. nine yeah. as well. D during normal yeah. business hours, that yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing item. Um, I'll open it. Uh, public hearing. Any member of the public would like to come forward and speak? Thank you, um, Jim Galloway, and uh, I wish Karen had talked about it a little because three minutes is tough to me. But 
I'll show you a little site plan. This is my property adjacent to the subject property. He's here. And you see that there's a three-foot fire lane on my property, which apparently was a condition of a special use permit when that property first was developed for a construction company. So I apparently have and maintain 395 feet of wooden fence. It virtually completely surrounds the property, except in the front where there's a metal gate and a smaller wall in front of the residence, which is still occupied as a grandfathered residency. So the problem I have experienced over the years isn't a matter of Dave here by himself. It's a historic problem with this property over here, which apparently never was required to have a fence. And as you can see, because there's a three-foot fire lane that I maintain, there's nothing, no possible operation on my property, even when I did have commercial tenants on it, that could possibly damage the fence. But I've continually experienced damage to the fence. Things on the other side of the property, which is now the generator property, drive into the fence. You can see it right there. And I asked Karen to come look at it. I'm sorry, I opened this thing a few days ago, like two days ago. I wrote the email, Karen, can you come with your camera, take a few shots, at least witness. So here's my amateur photo. And here's where this bulge is. This is what's on the other side of the bulge, which is a large truck, which the first time I noticed the bulge was a couple weeks ago. That truck was not facing this way. It had backed into the fence area. And I'm sure that a lot of times if somebody does that, they don't tell the boss even. Now, this fence is a patchwork. It's held up by pipe driven into the ground. You can see where the bases have been broken off. This is a pipe. This is a pipe holding up the broken base. There are holes and there are replaced slats, which I did when the last guy moved out because Griffith had a guy, he let him use it for storage, a contractor, storing forms. And they made a lot of noise, by the way, moving their stuff in and out and cleaning it with a power pressure washer and everything else. That was a problem. But this, so far I haven't experienced a noise problem here with this tenant. What I'm concerned about is I think something was missed in a previous special use permit. If I can't possibly damage this fence, 140 feet of it, why am I suffering the financial hardship of fixing these damages? And if I do want to say, hey, Dave or anybody in there, I think your guy's damaged the fence. We always have this issue of do they admit it? Can you prove it? When did it happen? So I'm just thinking why not, why shouldn't the tenant who, I don't even get to use all of my property. I can't use this three feet. Why shouldn't the guy who can go right up to the fence and park his vehicles there and store his stuff be responsible for maintaining a fence that could be damaged if things are backed into it, if things are improperly leaned against it, if things, as has happened with Griffith Electric, a piece of conduit gets shoved through the fence by a forklift. When the forklift goes to pick up the piece of conduit, it misses. Oops, here goes a two-inch diameter pipe right through my fence. So, you know, I've been absorbing this, but I thought, well, look, here's a special use permit. Apparently my fence was a condition of a special use permit so that I wouldn't bother this neighbor or these neighbors up here. Okay, why couldn't we have a condition on this special use permit where Mr. Griffith, the property owner, or works it out with Dave somehow, within some reasonable period of time, takes over the responsibility for the fence and the maintenance of the fence? Give them a year. I mean, I would prefer that they put in a reinforced concrete wall for the first five feet because then you'd really know if you hit it. But whatever it is, I would like to be able to say, hey, you know, that is what these special use permits were originally for, and 
And uh, as long as you're getting a special use permit, maybe we could take this opportunity to solve a historic problem because I don't want to get in fights with future or present tenants over did your guy admit that he backed into my fence. Um, but this thing is kind of on its last leg. Somebody's going to have to replace it soon anyway, and I just really don't feel that since it's absolutely impossible that I should be the one to do it. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, questions, yes. Yes, Jim, question, please. Hey. It, Jim, I'm sorry, I did not get a chance to go drive by because I broke my foot and I haven't been able to get out. <laughs> no, I got enough excuse. Karen came over. Really, you could ask her what real she said. It's a real excuse this time. But is that, is your property residential or is it a commercial it, use? Actually, I went through a process and had it zoned industrial. Um, several, you see, it's a jigsaw puzzle over there. Right. Some right. properties are, I found were already zoned in full industrial. Mm -hmm. So I, I paid my thousand uh, bucks last year, and I, I got this one thanks to you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, but it is, but unfortunately, the only thing I've been able to maintain in rental in this bad economy is the grandfathered residence, which at least, thank goodness, gives me enough money to pay the taxes. So there is somebody living in there. Yes, in the and. Residence. and okay. uh, and the fortunate thing is that the houses are pretty well insulated because this is in the flight path. Mm -hmm. So I have not had complaints from my tenant about Dave or his operation, and I don't have any problem with his operation and, and the condition that you now just put on it. Um, maybe he should go from 7 to 7 for all operations, but I'm not going to be picky about that. I'm just thinking, what do we, you know, I, I was required to build a, I mean, the, the previous guy was required to build a wood-faced fence. Mm -hmm. Why, I don't know. And they don't hold up really well and they're getting hit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't, and sometimes people don't even know that they've hit them. And so I was thinking, could you add a condition or recommend or craft a condition that would address this problem and I don't have to have it solved tomorrow, but if, here's a, an opportunity to fix something that probably should have been in condition on Griffith Electric when they first started operating to have a, a wall that would, because they intended to go right up to the property line with their storage mm -hmm. and their operations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Would the applicant like to come back and uh, respond? respond? Um, as I was just telling Karen, I thought I was supposed to maintain that on my fence anyhow. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, naturally, you know, if we if we damage anything, we'll, we'll maintain it. and. Uh, I, I have no issue at all with what, what you're saying. It makes perfect sense to me. Um, we, we, I, when this issue came forward, my concern with us doing anything formally as part of this condition is that we're we're sort of getting in the middle between a, an owner and a tenant. Right. And r really, the negotiations of what. I mean, you might ultimately pay, but the negotiations of, <laughs> of you know, who does what and during what time frame is, is a, should be negotiations between the two owners of the property, sure. I would think, as opposed to a person applying for a special use permit right. to have an operation there. Does anyone else feel differently about that? No, I, you know, I feel the same. What might be advisable to where, where your trucks park, though, is maybe get some um, bumper blocks. Yeah. I, I, you know, so they can't. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and uh, as I said, I mean, it, it's only being a good neighbor. If you yeah. damage the fence, you, you, you fix the fence. Yeah. So, I, and as I said, I thought that was probably our fence anyhow that I had to worry about. But. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll call you back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, no, I, I, have, I have no issue at all with what, with what Jim was saying. But you have no issue at all with with uh, repairing or maintaining it. But but uh, our issue is whether that ought to be a condition of approval for a special sure. use permit. It seems to me. Sure. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Jim. Would you like to come back up? Sure. For... And then I'd love to hear what Armando has to say. <laughs> well, I I didn't know Dave. In fact, I didn't even know about this <laughs> hearing until two days ago. Well, he seems so like a very we had no nice opportunity guy. to discuss to discuss what might actually be more of an owner's responsibility for the property. But had the owner been 
issued his special use permit in the same manner that the one was issued for my property, there wouldn't have been a problem at all to begin with because it would have been a condition of his special use permit, and that wall would have been built by Griffith Electric ages ago, and it would probably be a lot sturdier wall than what I have. So that was my point. I think that something was missed, and do you have the ability, and every condition you place, by the way, comes between separate parties, even if it's hours of operation, every condition you place on anything. So I was hoping maybe, you know, maybe Dave shouldn't be the one to do this. Maybe it should be the owner of the property next door. If it's a condition, he would have to do it in order to rent the property. If I try to work it out, I'll just tell you from experience, I will historically have for the next 20 years the same problems I've had. My guys didn't do it. It was preexisting condition. It isn't any worse today than it was, you know. I think our green lines are out there. Yes, in fact, I'm going to, thank you, Jim. I'm going to call a recess of the planning commission until staff returns. Okay. Let them come up with some ideas. I was hoping that they would come up with an idea, and I don't think that should all be one thing. Hopefully they will. All right, so we're in recess for a while. And I'll have a partially amused colleague. Thank you.
get the uh, meeting back going again. Uh, does uh, staff have some ideas for us? Chairman Bowles. Um, <laughs> frankly, we believe that uh, actually Mr. Galloway is no longer required to maintain the fence on his property. Uh, he's no longer operating under a special use permit after he has had his property rezoned. So frankly, Mr. Galloway is free to remove the fence uh, on his side uh, of the property. Um, if one or both of the property owners want to uh, install a fence uh, and maintain a fence, they are free to do that. Uh, Nevada Generator may want a fence there if, if Mr. Galloway chooses to remove his. Uh, we would, uh, we don't believe that the Planning Commission uh, can uh, require as a condition of the permit that uh, Nevada Generator uh, replace the fence that's actually on Mr. Galloway's property. Uh, if alternatively uh, the Planning Commission really wants to uh, uh, require a fence in this case, we would recommend that, or we would say that the fence has to be, uh, the requirement for a fence would have to be on uh, the applicant's property. Uh, but frankly, we would advise against that, that condition altogether. So you, I think you have some options there. Uh, at the end of the day, we tend to view this as, a, as an issue between two property owners. And since Mr. Galloway is no longer required to maintain the fence on his property, if he doesn't want to, if he doesn't want to have to um, keep that expense up, then he's free to take it down. Thank you. Could I ask a question then? Absolutely. Sometimes I just don't get things. So he doesn't have to keep up the special use permit because he's not operating the, the business. Is that correct? That, that property is no longer operating under a special use permit. It, he has had it rezoned, and, and uh, the, oh, so the, the, the residential use is, frankly, a nonconforming use, a legal nonconforming use on that property. Okay. So. Okay. So if we uh, take your advice, Armando, we would not be changing any conditions other than the condition eight that we changed initially. And I have wording if everybody wants to see that suggested. Here. Sure. Yes, please. Oops. I guess I have to leave. What I was suggesting is that the applicant may conduct any operations outside of the existing building during the hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that's adjusted condition eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions by any other member of the Planning Commission? For the applicant, Karen, anyone else? Mm -hmm. If not, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back. I think I did that twice, actually. But oh, it's twice safe. is better than not at all. It's safe. Exactly. It's safe. <laughs> Um, Mr. Chair, are yes. you prepared for a motion? I am, yes. Yeah, I'm going to give this a try. Just because. Okay. So, actually, maybe I wasn't ready to give this a try. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry. Here it is right here. Okay. I move to approve special use permit associated with PCN 12025, adopting findings S1 through S6, and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report, subject to conditions of approval one through nine as listed in the staff report with the changes in the wording to condition eight. And that's it. Second. Any discussion? All in I, favor? Yes. I, I just, the only discussion would be is I just sure hope we can be nice neighbors and get along. And, Okay. Very good. Thanks. Good to hear. Yeah, I know. That's great. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you Thanks, very much. Guys. I bet they'll become friends. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have item uh, number 11, PCN 12026, City of Sparks. <laughs> Jim Rundle, Senior Planner, here to uh, make a presentation on the request from the City of Sparks. If, 
Fellas, if you're going to have a discussion, could you have it outside the meeting room? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Real quick uh, background on this. Some of the planning commissioners have been here. Some are newer, but approximately year 2002 regional plan, the cities and the unincorporated Washoe County planning jurisdictions approved through the regional plan uh, a concept of doing transit-oriented development. Uh, the Reno corridor extended along Virginia Street and 4th Street, and the Prater and, and Sparks's corridor extended along Prater and Victorian. Uh, as time progressed, the city of Sparks refined the transit-oriented development corridor and ultimately constructed a new master plan, which the Planning Commission approved, that was accompanied with interim transit-oriented development zoning and design standards. Soon after that, the Planning Commission and City Council approved what we called the final TOD standards, and those are what are in place currently. As the Planning Commission has been aware through workshops, through stakeholder meetings, and uh, briefs from City Council meetings, as well as some of the Regional Planning Commissioners attending Regional Planning Commission meetings, there has been some concern over the number of acres, for example, that are in the Transit-Oriented Development Corridor in both of the two jurisdictions that have TOD in the Truckee Meadows. Uh, the City of Sparks has identified an area generally east of Sparks Boulevard, south of Prater, north of Interstate 80, and I'm going to say west of Solomon Circle, that used to be zoned for the most part industrial and is currently zoned TOD with the employment designation. Most of the uses that are in that area and most of the buildings in that area, in staff's opinion, could be rezoned back to industrial, some C2 and some tourist commercial without creating non-conforming uses or substandard developments. Uh, this, this will reduce the size of the TUD by approximately 20-25%. I have a, a map that I'd like to, to point out that depicts the area that I just described. As, as, I, as I explained, primarily the area has been master planned TOD employment. A portion of it has been master planned TOD mixed commercial. And that's the pink area. Staff is proposing uh, this land use map. The red here on the, uh, is on the intersection of Lincoln and Sparks Boulevard, and it represents the Wild Island block, as well as, a, as two industrial buildings that are over there. Uh, one of them has a gymnastics use within the building. Uh, there is a tourist commercial, staff has proposed a tourist commercial designation along the freeway that would accommodate the hotel use that is currently there. Next to the tourist commercial staff is proposed general commercial and that would essentially uh, accommodate the uh, fast food restaurants and and service station, or I guess not a service station anymore, a gas station that is there. To the north along Prater Way, staff is proposing the majority of that go back to professional office, which is what it most of it was prior to being rezoned and remaster planned to transit oriented development. That would include the hospital and the facilities in proximity to the hospital. On this map here, and these are included in your staff report, I would like to point out this is the existing zoning and the parcels have been they're zoned or uh, colored gray to depict which parcels were rezoned to TOD. I want to point out the parcel here at the intersection of Prater Way and Sparks Boulevard uh, used to, is, is a planned development, and that parcel was not rezoned when we did the TOD rezoning. Uh, the parcel across the street from it, across Lillard, is the police department, and that facility was zoned a public facility and was also not rezoned when we did the TOD. Another parcel that was not rezoned at the time was the Gandolfo Arena and the park up there on the on the hill. So therefore, staff is proposing that 
the zoning looks something like that and it essentially mimics what the master plan proposal was. Uh, we are proposing though to remaster plan the old with, with city works that'll make it more familiar to the to the um, planning commission and uh, to remaster plan it back to uh, industrial because it is currently master plan employment TOD. The planning commission should have received some sheets that that depict yeah, zoning permitted uses in the area. As a, as a planning commission can imagine, one of staff's primary concerns was that we did not create non-conforming uses, substandard developments, mm -hmm. or take any property rights from from the existing property owners. And uh, we have done an analysis on these properties to to make our best attempt to ensure we, we were allowing a number of uses going forward into the future. This sheet here is, is the TOD employment uses and then in the right hand column it's the zoning code industrial uses with locational requirements. That's the one I'm looking at right now. Mm -hmm. Looks like it uh, doesn't zoom in very well on the overhead. <laughs> but that, the, the reason I'd like to point that one out is to, to accommodate uh, Mr. Rupert that, that he has attended as one of the property owners. He also attended the neighborhood meeting that I, that we, that City of Sparks conducted last week as reflected in your staff report. Uh, one of his concerns was that he was losing the ability to do restricted gaming if his site was rezoned from TOD to industrial. His property would, is, is with, is, uh, is here it is within a 600 foot, uh, it is within the 600 foot locational requirement of Sparks Boulevard, which then allows for commercial uses as well as the industrial uses. And that is to make it familiar to the Planning Commission how certain recreational uses are allowed in the industrial if they're all within 600 feet of Glendale or Greg Street. Uh, retail, restaurant, certain uses are allowed if you're within major arterials of an with an industrial zoning. Um, at, the, at the neighborhood meeting, his concern was would he be able to do restricted gaming? Restricted gaming is typically less than four, uh, 15 or 14 slot machines. 15 or fewer slot machines. Doesn't allow for table games, but if you're operating a restaurant or a bar and you have the, the poker machines in the bar or some slot machines, that would be permitted as an accessory use. And I wanted to say that on, on the record for, for him. That is what the letter is uh, from Michael Pony that you all received is requesting uh, affirmation of. And, and that's what I wanted to explain. The Planning Commission has received an analysis of a professional office, C2, tourist commercial, and the industrial, standard industrial and industrial that's within the 600 feet of Sparks Boulevard. The analysis has been done to show what uses are permitted under the TOD employment designation and what would be permitted if they are rezoned as proposed on this, with this application. There's a significant amount of stuff to go, of uh, information <laughs> to go over and uh, I think I'll leave it to your questions from here. Thank you, questions for Jim. Um, I was given this note with a with a note to read into the record um, the the letter that you've made reference to. I think the other what planning is, commissioners haven't seen this letter. Um, what's, so do no. yeah. I oh, I'm sorry. Did you just get okay. just we have one? I'm sorry. I thought all the planning commissioners had had received. It. Just got okay. this. This is a letter um, which I can read in its entirety if, if I should be doing it, Mr. Attorney. All right. um, Jim made reference to it and I think answered the questions that the attorneys were asking here. Yes, let's yes. just in make sure we include Mr. Pawnee's letter in the official in record. In summary, uh, Commissioner uh, or uh, Chairman Bowles, uh, the, uh, the letter says that, they, that uh, Mr. Pawnee supports the rezoning, the remaster planning and 
based on what staff had told him, if they ever wanted to use restricted gaming as an accessory use to say retail or a bar at that site, they would be able to, and I agree with, with that, that they would be able to. Thank you. So you want this in Yes, there are letters coming down. Any other questions for Jim? Thank you, Jim. A lot of work and uh, yeah. and some really interesting reading, which we don't have time to go through. But it was, no, it was interesting reading and did a good job. I'm sure that we'll all find little nicks and knacks of that we need to change. But yes. uh, you did good work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing item. Uh, any, uh, I will open the public hearing. Anyone in the public like to come forward and speak? Dick Rupert. Uh, I'm property owner at uh, the corner of Boxington and Lincoln Way. And uh, we've been through this process a couple of times with Jim, and he's been very helpful in working with us. And we're not here to object to anything. All we wanted to do was get a clarification of the uses that we would be permitted to going forward under the industrial zoning. And uh, I think we've satisfied that. Okay. So unless you've got questions, that's that's pretty much it. Thank you. Good. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Giving us that information. <laughs> Any other members of the public like to speak? Seeing none, bring it back to the Planning Commission. Any additional questions for Jim? Jim, I, or um, uh, Doug Thornley, I assume I'm assuming from the uh, suggested motions here that we need three separate motions. That's right. With three separate votes, is that yes, correct? Yes. Yep. Um, I will entertain uh, one, one, the first motion then on the master plan agreement. If someone's prepared to do that, I'll be happy to do it. All right. I move to adopt resolution. 196 amending the Sparks Master Plan and forwarding a recommendation of certification for the Master Plan Amendment associated with PCN 12026 to the City Council to change the boundary of the Todd Corridor, remove the Todd Employment designation, remove all standards proper, properly related thereto, and change the land use designation for all the land with the Todd employment designation to 352 acres of industrial, 61 acres of office professional, 46 acres of public facility, 30 acres of tourist commercial, and 4 acres of general commercial by adopting findings MP1 through MP4 and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report. Second. You're playing hurt and did well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second on the uh, uh, master plan amendment. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. I will accept um, a motion concerning rezoning. Mr. Chairman? I move to forward a recommendation of approval to the City Council of the rezoning request associated with PCN 12062 to rezone 88 parcels totaling approximately 472 acres from Todd Employment and Todd Mixed Use Commercial to 331 acres of I Industrial, 51 acres of PO Professional Office, 46 acres of PF Public Facility, 30 acres of TC Tourist Commercial, and four acres of C2 general commercial based on the findings Z1 through Z3 and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report. Second. I have a motion and a second on the issue of rezoning PCN12062. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. And I will accept an, a motion on the code amendment issue. 
Um, can I make a motion here? You may. I'll do the little one yeah, here. <laughs> you made the, the lady who's playing her. I don't. The one. I know. I'm Another sorry. One. Sorry. <laughs> I move to forward a recommendation of approval to the City Council of Code Amendment associated with CA 3-12. Second. I have a motion and second on the Code Amendment issue. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. That was a lot of work. A lot of work. That's a run-in Senate. We are on <laughs> item uh, number 12, general business, uh, public comment, item 12. Any member of the public that wishes to speak for three minutes on uh, no, we're okay. any issues? No more. <laughs> no more, it sounds like. Seeing none, I'll close the public comment and bring it back. Uh, are there any comments from the commissioners? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Move to approve. We are adjourned. Adjourn. 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 Yeah, but that's good. Thanks. Thanks.